Uh, thank you all for being here. We are um, we are here at Fairfield's Town Green as we just finished celebrating our 376th birthday. And and being a big history buff, it, it just reminds us that you know this country was founded on the principles of participation and and people who have a say in their government. So as part of that. Uh, we have convened this meeting to, to share with the public and renew our call for a special session uh, as it relates to the business climate that we are experiencing in the state of Connecticut. And I want to reiterate, the climate it itself is not for anyone to be blamed. We are in a difficult cycle of business, but understanding that, we have a responsibility as legislators to lead and not simply put our head in the stand and say we will wait for session in January. The crisis is at hand and that we are calling for a special session to get back to work. To get back to work to address the issues that are facing and confronting all of our people, businesses, hospitals, those people that are in need of disability services. We are all impacted every single day. We are at a crisis in confidence and a crisis in where our state is going. So I am here to ask for a special session to be convened by our governor, to really reflect the Connecticut spirit that we are listening to the people. I have gotten untold amount of emails from constituents asking for us to act, asking for us to show leadership in convening a special session to address the business at hand. And I'm very, very proud to be here with my Fairfield Con Connecticut General Assembly uh, delegation colleagues. Uh, Kristen McCarthy Vahey was invited. She had a conflict. Um, and um, we're, we're very lucky to have Brenda Kupchik, who represents the 132nd District. And please, Brenda, offer some comments and, and why we're here as well. Um, thank you for being here today. We're we asked to have this here right in the center of Fairfield because GE is headquartered in Fairfield and obviously uh, the discussion in this town since the uh, budget was passed in the G uh, Connecticut General Assembly has been is GE going to leave Fairfield? It is a extraordinarily concerning topic in this town. If you go into a grocery store, if you walk down the street, if you stand on the town green, it's all anyone wants to talk about. People in this town are very concerned about the policies that have been passed in our Connecticut General Assembly that could push out a company that is so beloved in this town, like GE. And not just GE, but other companies. Aetna is, is a concern of leaving, possibly travelers. The policies that our state um, has have been implementing over the past many years, I think have put us in a situation where we are in a crisis. Uh, GE, some people say, well, they're a big corporation, they're just trying to get out of paying taxes. I would, con I would uh, contend that that is just simply not true. GE is paying a lot of taxes in the state, um, payroll taxes, workman comp taxes, and they also provide an incredible amount of employment. Think about the jobs alone. $14 billion worth of goods and services provided by other companies through GE. Those, pe those companies are providing jobs to people who live in this town and all towns in this state. This is a huge issue and we're just simply asking, reiterating our request for a special session of the Connecticut General Assembly to look closely at the policies of this state to make a difference to change because without jobs we have big problems in Connecticut. So that is why we're here today and I thank you and I would like to introduce my colleague uh, Representative Laura Devlin who represents the 134th District. Thank you, Brenda, and uh, thanks everyone for being here. Um, I would like to reiterate what my colleagues have said. We've known since the budget was passed, you know, Connecticut is in a serious situation, both our economic and the business policies that have been put in place in our state. And one of the things that I do admire about GE and that we've talked with them about is less about their desire to have a special deal made just for them in our state, but to, is, to address these holistic policies that have made it difficult for them, it makes it difficult for their employees, it makes it difficult for all citizens and all businesses in our state to stay here and to thrive. 
uh, Representative Kupchik and I, as well as you know many other legislators, have written to the governor requesting a special session, and I hope that um, he will you know listen to our calls. Uh, along with the Speaker of the House um, and our President of the Senate to be able to readdress the issues that are in front of us now. Thank you. I'll turn it back to Tony. Thank you. And I think we stand unified as a state delegation in, in, in working very, very hard in Hartford to represent the interest. And, and again, we, we call for a renewed special session for, for the simple purpose of getting back to work. Uh, the budget that was passed was, was very narrowly passed and, and the reaction has been swift and, and unfortunately very, very frustrating by, by the people that we represent. Um, so we are doing our part in Hartford and, and I want to now introduce uh, Fairfield's first selectman. I greatly appreciate him here uh, in representing a bipartisan approach that moves this discussion outside of the politics and really truly representing the people and I hope that he will join us in the call for the special session to get back to work to helping the people in the state of Connecticut and the town of Fairfield. Michael Tetra. Good morning. The, uh, I'm not quite sure I ever envisioned standing together with this group but I'm thrilled that uh, we're all here today. I'm thrilled that it's on Fairfield's town green. Obviously with the makeup of this group one of the first questions is about the politics and the po political tones. And I think that's something that has crept into too many discussions since the budget was passed. Fairfield is ground zero for General Electric. It's extremely important to all of our residents, and it was mentioned earlier, you can't have a conversation in town without talking about GE. It's on everybody's lips. We are very concerned. They've been here for 40 years. It's part of our town's identity. Everyone in town cares about GE. They care about GE staying here. They've been immensely valuable to Fairfield. As was mentioned, uh, GE does pay property taxes here, about 1.8 million. Their value goes far beyond that. They provide employment. They provide jobs for the suppliers that, that give, sell them products and services. They are involved in, immensely in some of the charitable and not-for-profit work and I, you just have to think back to sa the tragedy at Sandy Hook and realize it was GE that jumped in with money and people to help Newtown sift through that and get uh, back together and manage the donations uh, of money that were coming in so it could be appropriately spent and processed. I'm happy that this conference is here today. What I'm looking for are some new ideas. I think we've spent way too much time talking. I think we need some solid suggestions on how to move forward. I think that people need to get together and start to work. I think that's got to be Democrats and Republicans all the way through on this. And I, I really like the comment that Senator Wong mentioned earlier, which is this is not about blame. As the cliche goes, we are where we are. The question is, how do we get out of here? We have serious concerns. Corporations, GE is doing a formal reevaluation process. Corporations are evaluating Connecticut and whether it's best for their company every single day. It is not just about the big corporations. It's about corporations up and down the line. I've talked to one of our developers here as I reached out to different top companies in Fairfield, and they're pointing out that their tenants are less likely to sign a long-term lease until the GE issues resolve. There's an impact on the real estate market. We really need a long-lasting solution, and we need people getting together and working together now to do that. Fairfield's done our part. We've just had the lowest tax increase in 15 years. We have a low unemployment rate. We have a low commercial vacancy rate. Our last budget had an overwhelming bipartisan support with almost no changes. If we can do it, so can the state. It's not that hard. But we do need to leave our political jackets uh, at the door. If we don't do it, the state's in serious jeopardy. It's like we're driving towards the cliff and everybody's arguing who should be at the wheel, but nobody's taking control of the wheel. I hope today is, is truly a new step, a step forward, uh, with some new initiatives, some new ideas. Getting the same old people in the same room to have the same old discussion isn't moving us forward. What I'm looking for, what the residents of Fairfield are looking for, and what the residents of our state are looking for are some new ideas on how we're going to come together and solve this problem. 
who are the stakeholders are going to come in? We've got tremendous resources in our state, from universities to business consultants, tremendously powerful and intelligent people with lots of experience. Uh, heck, Dave Walker ran for lieutenant governor for a while in the last election. He was a U.S. Comptroller General. He's a phenomenal resource. We should be tapping his brain, his ideas, his thoughts, his experience, as well as others in the market. I hope we'll hear about some of these steps forward, some of these new ideas moving forward from here, and I'm looking forward to uh, what's coming up next. Thank you very much for the chance. Thank you, Mike, and, and, and along that same thing, I, I completely agree. I, I think that's where the, the renewed call for the special session really is, uh, an opportunity to get back to work, to meet face to face, to deliberate and really work hard. Uh, you're right, it, it's a sign of leadership, it's a sign of showing that perhaps we didn't craft the best budget that was ever designed and that it's time to get back to work for the people in our community. And, and, and it's not, it's truly not. Having Mike here reflects a call for action. It is really a, a, an appreciation for me that, that we are taking this on a bipartisan approach and we hope that our colleagues throughout the state will heed the call and that our governor will heed the call that we have to get back to work now for the people of a state of Connecticut and Fairfield. And, and I think Mike touted earlier the taxes. Here's, here's the reality why GE is so critical. If GE leaves, our taxes, our economics, our vitality as a community perhaps may go with it. That is why we are calling for action now, not waiting. Let us do it now. I'm thrilled to have my Senate Minority Leader Lynn Fasano traveling down from West Haven uh, to be able to reflect how important it is for all of us throughout the state to take action now. Lynn? Thank you. I'll keep my comments brief. Uh, I agree that we need to get together. As First Lechman said, we need to check our jackets in. But the most important part is the governor needs to call a special session or the leaders. We need to get into a room and we need to have a budget that makes sense. We need to figure out where we are in economic times, because not only is this issue about GE, which I know this part of the state is singularly focused on, but it's about all the other businesses who will follow GE out the door if they leave. And we have to let those businesses know we heard your voices, we understand the concerns, and we're going to react to the concerns because it is predictability that the businesses look for. It is the ability of knowing you can stay in the state five or ten years. And we have to show them that we heard the voices and we're going to set a new trail of predictability. A new ability for businesses to say we can invest in the state, grow jobs, and be part of the economy. It starts today. We can't wait for next session. We can't wait for February. We can't wait for May. We have to do it today. And it's not about whether that budget's right or wrong. It's about doing what's right for the state. I want to thank the delegation for inviting me here today. And I look forward to having special session in the next 10 days. Thank you. Uh, we would also like to, uh, Representative Devlin and I would like to uh, welcome our minority leader, Themis Claritis, who's, who traveled down from Derby. Um, and we would like if you could offer some comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. As, as everyone who spoke today said, it's not about whose fault it is, it's not about how we got here. But what it is about, what it is about, and there's, make no mistake, it's about common sense. So whether you have a D or an R after your name is not the point. The point is who will do what's best for the state of Connecticut. And it's not about, it's not about fixing GE's problem. It's not about fixing Aetna's problem. It's not about fixing the traveler's problem. The problem GE has is the same problem that the ice cream parlor coffee shop that I was at this morning in Bethany at 8 o'clock has. It's the same problem that the coffee shop down the street has. It's the same problem every business in this state has, no matter how big or how small. It is the fact that we are not helping them. We are not getting out of their way. In fact, we are standing in their way. Because as each and every one of you know, we can put together bills every year and call them jobs bills. But government cannot create jobs. The only way we get jobs in this state is by allowing business to do what it does best, and that means it needs to thrive. 
So I want to thank the Fairfield delegation, the first selectmen, for, ha for having us here today. This is about common sense. This is not a problem that started yesterday. This is not a problem that started in May. This has been a problem for many years and a long time coming. And when you're known nationally in nonpartisan polls and surveys as the bottom five in the United States of America for business, you know there's a problem. And there is a way to fix it. And we do have ideas, but we have answers too. But everybody has to be at that table to find those solutions, and that's what we're asking. Thank you. I, I want to sum up this discussion by going back to, to saying that, as I mentioned a little bit of the history of the greatness of this country, the greatness of this country is the fact that elected leaders reflected the will of the people. And we're hoping through this conversation, through this dialogue, that we give the power back to the people, that you write to your legislators, you write to your elected leaders, and that you demand a special session you demand to call us back into working for you because the plan at current doesn't work. Ask the hospitals that have to lay off staff and, and, and not be able to provide critical care. Ask the mother and the father who has a child in need for disability services that has to wait on a list. You have individuals suffering from addiction and mental health services that are not getting their services. Let us ask our elected leaders, speak out, restore the power back to the people, and let's get back to work. Truly, let's get back to work and restore the greatness of Connecticut. So I'm thrilled that you're all here, but more importantly, we're also here to answer any questions you may have and direct to us as well.